Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. For all of my new subscribers, my name is Montel, and for all of my existing subscribers, welcome back. So in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to create a high quality media kit. So a media kit is essentially a document that you would send over to brands or the media or PR if you are wanting to secure sponsorships, collaborations, features, all of that kind of stuff. This tutorial is going to be very beginner friendly. So if you are just getting started in your content creation or your blogging career, or maybe you're just aspiring, then this is definitely gonna be a great video for you. But on the other side, it's also gonna be a good video if you are a business owner and you are wanting to get into brand deals and sponsorships and working with your favorite brands. There is a common misconception that as a business owner, you can't also be an influencer or you can't work with brands. And that's just not true and it is something that I myself kind of believed for a long time and I thought okay if I'm going down the business route then I just have to put the influence in on the back burner and now I'm realizing it's not the case we can do it all we can have it all so why not and yeah I kind of abandoned my creator inbox because I thought let me just focus on business for now and it wasn't until the other week where I looked in my specific inbox for brand deals and I saw so many brands in there reaching out still wanting to collaborate with me still requesting a partnership so from that I was like okay I'm missing the mark here it's time to up my game it's time to fix up so that's really what inspired this video and inspired me to sh want to show you how I'm leveling up my game when it comes to working with brands so you can also do the same most brands nowadays are going to want to see some form of media kit or some document just showing your stats more about your brand and why they should work with you and how your values align with theirs so it is really essential for you to have a media kit prepared so in the event a brand reaches out to you or maybe you pitch a brand then you've got something to show them and you can respond quickly as well so I definitely recommend just getting this prepared even if you are just aspiring and you haven't yet started and if you are someone who's like whoa wait a minute Montel you're going too fast how can I create a media kit when I don't even know how to pitch myself to brands then I have the perfect resource for you and I'm going to be giving you some useful tips for how you can create the best media kit possible so make sure you do stick around till the end of the video so you don't miss out on those tips so what you are going to need for this tutorial is your laptop or a mobile you'll need canva.com your social media platforms statistics some high quality brand images and then finally you may need a bit of money if you decide to go for one of the options which I am going to discuss so once you've got all of those ready let's dive in so step one is to find your template so I'm going to show you four different ways that you can find inspiration for your template for your media kit. So the first option is by going onto canva.com. It is hop onto Canva, if I could spell. <laughs> and when you open up Canva, what you will see is the search bar at the top. So in the search bar, you are literally just going to type in media kit. And then on here, you will find so many different templates for different media kit designs. So you can just have a look through these and find one which resonates with you and your brand and go ahead and choose that one. So for the purpose of the tutorial, let's just click on this one. So once you have found a template, if you're happy with how it looks, then you can just go ahead and start to customize it straight off the bat without really changing too much. Maybe you wanna just change up the images and the, the brand colors just to make sure that it aligns with your brand and um, but yeah this is one easy way that you can go about creating your first template and you can just add things into there obviously you'd make it look a lot cuter than this but for the purpose of the tutorial I just wanted to show you how easy it is to find media kit templates literally in Canva there's so many options available option two is looking on Pinterest for inspiration so similar to Canva again you can just use a search bar and you can type in media kit and this will just give you more inspiration 
for different types of media kits, different designs. So this will really help to spark your own creativity when it comes to finding um, a design. And what you'll also find within Pinterest is a lot of these are shoppable. As you know, Pinterest is it's kind of like a catalog. So you could click on one that you may like, and then it may take you to the page where you can actually purchase it, which is something I'm gonna talk to you about in a second. Option three is to go onto a site like creativemarket.com or etsy.com and simply purchase one of the templates that they have readily available. So you can use a site such as creativemarket.com to find templates which you can actually purchase. So you don't have to worry about design, worry about Canva, none of that. You can literally just purchase one. So in Creative Market, if you type in press kit, you'll find different media slash press kits in here. I don't know why, but when you type in media kit, you don't really see anything come up. It's just social media graphics. So that's why in here it's best to type brand kit. And again, you can just find one that you like. So maybe you like this design and there'll be an option to purchase it. It'll give you three different pricing options. So you've got the personal, commercial and extended. So I would always suggest going for the commercial just because with the personal, it literally is what it says. So it's for personal use only. So because you are going to be sending this to brands and you may have this available on your website, you just want to keep make sure that you are protected. So I just always go for the commercial and it's only a couple of dollars more usually. So yeah, you want to go ahead and purchase it. So when you scroll down, it'll just give you information about the product and it'll also tell you what is required. So on here, this is just a Microsoft Word one. A lot of them are Canva though, and that is normally the easiest. So if you find one that you like, see if you can edit it on Canva or maybe you've got other systems like Adobe Premiere, something like that. And yeah, it'll just give you all the options available that you can edit it on. But this is so simple. Once you do purchase, you'll then be sent a download link and then you can upload it onto the relevant editing software, add all of your details in and boom, you've got a media kit there. You didn't even have to put in any effort at all. Or if you're someone who's like, I love the designs on Creative Market and Etsy, but I'm not really feeling to spend right now, then you can simply look at these designs as inspiration and then hop into Canva and create your own based on those concepts. I'm going to show you exactly how I created my own media kit using inspiration from Pinterest and Creative Market. So I really liked this design. I thought this really matched my brand and my own style but I of course wanted to make it unique to myself because the one thing that you never want to do is completely copy somebody else's work. You can get inspiration from it, but you never want to copy it completely. So I just decided to look at a design for inspiration and then go ahead and make my own media kit. So this is my media kit and my version of the inspiration that I found. So I'm just going to zoom in a bit so you can see what's included. But you can see at the top, I share information about my brand. So I share that I'm a lifestyle and entrepreneurship creator. And I also share where I am currently based. So then when I move down, I then share my stats. So remember how I said you always want to include your best stats first. So I know for me, my best stats are my YouTube channel. And this is outdated actually. So I need to go in and update that even further. But include the stats where you do have the most engagement and the most traction. So for me, I knew that, yes, I show up on Facebook and I show up on TikTok, but I don't yet have the audience there. So I don't really need to highlight those platforms just yet. Another thing I did was add more information about my audience. So my audience are female entrepreneurs between the ages 21 and 34 years old. That type of information is gonna be so relevant for brands when they're considering working with me. And then I also shared where my audience comes from and I really liked the map which came from the inspiration um, post. Yeah, I really liked this map. I think it was really cool. So I wanted to add it to my own media kit. And this is actually a pro feature. So you have to be on Canva Pro in order to get a, a map similar to this one. Now, this is optional, but if you are someone who wants to take your brand to the next level, I would suggest investing in Canva Pro. So I've dabbled with Canva Pro in the free version and I've gone back and forth, back and forth. And I've decided that Canva Pro is actually worth the investment just because you have access 
access to so many more templates and graphics and features. So if you are someone who's not yet at the stage where you can invest in a graphic designer, but you are wanting to take your brand to that next level, I would suggest just making that investment. And I do have a code down in the description box. Make sure you do check that out if you are interested in upgrading to Canva Pro. And then I also include my demographics. So that's page one, all about my brand, my stats, all of the information that the brand is gonna wanna see straight away. I didn't wanna waste the time by having an image of myself and then another page with all the stats, just get straight to the point. And then on the second page, I include the brands that I've partnered with in the past. This could look different for you. If you haven't worked with any brands in the past, then don't worry, that's fine. You don't have to add this in. But if you have worked with brands, even if it's on a free basis where it's just a gift in and they haven't paid you, you can still add that in to this section. Then I also include what type of services I offer and how brands can collaborate with me. And I've added a section which says rate card available upon request just because I want to make sure that the brand's actually interested in me before we discuss the price because that can always be negotiated but I don't advise to lead with the price just because you want it's still a cold relationship so you want to focus on warming up the relationship first with the brand and then you can, can discuss the pricing so yeah that is a snapshot in to my media kit and if you're wondering where I got these stats from or if you want to know where you can find your own stats easy then I would suggest creating an account on a website website called Zine. So this is an influencer marketing platform and I find this really cool because they actually create a media kit for you. So once you type in all of your details and your platforms, you can find a digital media kit on here with all of your stats on here. And I just find that this is just so amazing. And you can definitely share this and send this to brands just as it is. But I, I just like to make it more personal than this and just to show that I put in a bit of effort. But I mean, you can absolutely just send this to brands but what I use this for is to find out my stats so I just take all of the information from here and I just input that into my own media kit and there we have it that is it so that is how I create my media kit in canva.com so I want to give you now some top tips when it comes to creating your own media kit just to make sure it's of the highest quality and you do have a the best opportunity to get those conversions but wait before we jump into the tip remember when I said I had a resource available for you if you've been wondering how do I even pitch to brands you're gonna want to listen up to this so the pitching kit is a six piece complete pitching bundle for brand and hotel collaborations so what you get inside the pitching kit is one soft pitch template so this is a template that you're gonna use to reach out to your favorite brands on social media whether it be on their Twitter account LinkedIn account or Instagram account in the DMs it includes one brand brand pitch template. So this is what you'll send to brands. It includes one hotel pitching template. So if you wanna work with hotels, restaurants, venues, you can use that template. It also includes a template with pointers. So I've just gone, I basically dissected the template and I've told you why each section is important and what you can do if you don't have the relevant information yet. It includes one follow-up template. The beauty of pitching, it really is in the follow-up. So you want to make sure that you are utilizing the follow-up because that's where you'll find you get most of the collaborations and the partnerships and then it also includes a pitching tracker so you can keep a track of the brands you've reached out to where you're at with the follow-up process and whether you signed the deal so if you want more information on the pitching kit all of that will be down in the description box so tip number one is to make sure that you are including your best stats so you want to make sure that you're highlighting where your brand is performing well so always put the platforms where you have the best performance first and remember Remember, you don't always have to put every platform as well. I feel like it's a common misconception for you to think you have to put every single platform starting with Instagram. But if Instagram's not your best platform and maybe you've got more subscribers over on YouTube or maybe you do better on Twitter, then highlight those platforms. If you've got a banging TikTok account, if, you're, if you've got high stats on Pinterest, always emphasize where you have the best engagement and remember you don't have to put all of the stats in there. 
if they're not particularly the best stats. Tip number two is remember when it does come to your stats, you can diversify this. So you don't always just have to put the number of followers. You can switch that up by putting the number of engagement or the reach or maybe even your demographic. So if you know that you have a highly concentrated demographic, maybe it's black women based in London and you know that makes up the majority of your audience, then highlight that because the brands that you are looking for partnerships with, that's maybe the audience they're looking for. But if you just put in the follower number and don't really give more detail into what that demographic looks like, you could be missing out on a great opportunity because they're only seeing the stats that you put forward. So let's say, for example, you're not necessarily happy with your follower amount. Maybe you've got 500 followers, but you know out of that 500 followers, all of them fit the demographic of the brand that you're wanting to work with. So instead of just putting 500 followers, which the brand may look at and think, hmm, well, why would I, why would we want to work with you? Instead of that, you can highlight that 90%, 95% of your demographic is made up of X amount of people. And that looks so much more attractive than the traditional follower count and all of the stats we think we have to add. So get creative with your stats. Think about ways that you can really highlight and make the most of the numbers you have because it's not necessarily about having the most numbers it's about having the most impact so think about how your content is really going to impact the brands and their audience in the best way possible tip number four is to try and stick to one to two pages personally i think it is best just to have a short and snappy media kit you're giving the brand a snapshot overview of who you are what your brand is who your audience is and that's all they need to see and if they're interested from that that's when and you can then have follow-up calls, you can have follow-up emails, and then you can give them more insight into your brand. But you don't necessarily want to overwhelm them with a eight to 10 page spread. And remember, this is just my opinion. So do what's best for you. I know some people do amazing with these big brand kits, but for me, I just think it's best to stick to one to two pages. So that is it for this video. I do hope you did enjoy this tutorial. If there's any other tutorials you'd like me to film in this format, then make sure you leave them down in the comments and I'll definitely get those done for you as well. And if you really enjoyed this video and you are confident to get started on your own journey of working with brands and pitching brands, make sure you head down to the description box where you can get your hands on the pitching kit. That is it for this one. I will see you in the next one. Peace.